So my mother-in-law lives in Trelgan, which is part of the La Trobe Valley in Gippsland. Gippsland itself is actually massive. Trelgan would actually be part of West Gippsland. Anyway, we often go there for the weekend, but this weekend just gone, I happened to go when she had her knitting group meeting or what do we call it? Stitch and bitch, stitch and chat. So that was actually on the Sunday and just to top it off and make it a complete knitters weekend we decided we'd go and visit this gorgeous little yarn shop in Rosedale which is just a little bit further west from Melbourne uh, on the way to sale. The shop's called Cotton and Woolcraft, it's on the main road of uh, Rosedale as you drive through. Gorgeous little shop, I absolutely highly recommend paying them a visit uh, and if you can't make it to Rosedale they do have an online shop so I'll be sure to put all the details in the description, links etc. They had heaps of yarn that you probably wouldn't find in other places. I did a bit of filming there, so I'll take you along and we'll have a look at some of the things that they have. I got to touch it though. And now, the knitting group on Sunday. I think there were seven knowledgeable knitters attending, as well as myself. Two of which are also indie hand dyers, so I'll put all links to their beautiful stuff as well. Just being there and seeing their work and listening to them talk, I think I've learnt so much more about knitting and and about a lot of things I would otherwise not come across or know even exists. So why don't you grab a cuppa, because this is a long one, come shopping with me in Rosedale and we'll hang out with the ladies from the Gippsland Fibre Groupies. Go into a yarn shop, go into a yarn shop. Yes. You want to come Freya? Look at wool. <laughs> you can go and play at the park. Nana and I can go and play with the yarn. Cotton and wool craft in the sleepy little town of Rosedale, Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not that sleepy. <laughs> it's not. It's a cute little town. Welcome to Rosedale. Alright. Have fun at the park. Mwah. Bye! Goodness. Come to pat the yarn. Oh, I use this brand to do that um that green cardigan, but it but wool. Never seen this before. Hilary Marmel. Marmel is marble. Old English. Oh, look at this colourway. Isn't it gorgeous?
I was saying in the car on the way over how crocheters aren't as snobby about their yarn <laughs> as knitters. No, they're probably not. <laughs> because we just crochet and take up a lot more yarn. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is pricier. Emma, Emma is my daughter in law, and she's a very, very talented knitter and crocheter. Hello, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a gorgeous, gorgeous shawl? It's beautiful. And it's almost illusion knitting. Oh but, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Like the scarf I did. Yeah. This is cute too. Oh, isn't it a nice little jumper? That would be a very nice frayer sort of jumper, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, isn't that another shawl? Look at this. Oh, nice. They're your colours. Yeah, yeah. Oh what, nice. What that shawl? This one. Yep. In oh. the panda. Is that the panda crypto, is it? The the shawl. No, it's uh, this one. Oh this? Yeah. What what it what's it's cotton. Ah, right. That is that. One of those. One of those to Oh and look at the gorgeous colours. And the pattern comes inside the ball. Oh, oh yeah. Very oh, nice. Yes, another fancy acrylic. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> One day you will. Yeah. It's always good to touch it. Oh yes. Just do you know what's here? Buying things over over the net is never the same, is it? No. Because the colours are never 100%. No, no, they're not. And you don't know if it's going to be scratchy or... No. That's what I made the dish cloth out of. Oh, right. oh, nice. oh it's a bit boot clay, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Toys. Sock blocker! Yeah. <laughs> I know people do, but I tend to just block them on my feet. <laughs> exactly. What if you're not making them for yourself? Well, this is true. <laughs> because it's nice to come into a shop and see people actually see you working. Yeah. Well, we often have ladies come in to, to meet. Oh, lovely. But it's the social thing. Yeah. Well, it is. Tomorrow, got got uh, Gippsland Fibre Groupies meeting in the park in Terralgan. Oh, nice. We, we try to get together once a month. And uh, do you know that group? No. Oh, okay. Well, it's on Ravelry. And Gippsland Fibre Groupies, a nice bunch of people. That would be yeah. great for you to be in the mission, wouldn't it? Yeah. And it's fun to knit with you, because you know what's going to happen next. No, no. That's great. That's beautiful. Really nice. Cool.
Oh, yeah. Oh, we've got. I'm so impressed. One. Hmm? This color or this color for you? This one or this one? Which yeah, I don't like the aqua color. Yeah, I thought you might. <laughs> yeah. It's thirty-five dollars. Well, you get a whole shawl out of it. Well, yeah, this is true. Yeah. And it's rather nice, isn't it? It's lovely. It wouldn't be a very hard shawl to make. I might have to put myself on. Yeah, and the pattern. The pattern's on the band, hey? Yeah, yeah. It's the softest cotton I've come across. Yeah. So soft. It's 40 wool, 40 acrylic, and 20 alpaca. Oh, yeah. It's got to be nice and warm to go to Syria. And that's a 10? Yeah. Yep. While we're in Rosedale, we also popped into the op shop run by the Lions Club. They actually have some awesome there. I, I got a whole 80s outfit from there one time. But I found this amazing basket! Ugh. $2! It's the perfect project basket. It's got flat base. Love it! Love it! Okay, so I'm off to crash a knitting party. My mother in law, you can probably hear her lovely music. <laughs> Schubert. It's Schubert. Her name is Michelle, and she has a monthly knitting group. What's the group called? Gippsland Fiber Groupies. Gippsland Fiber Groupies. Love it. <laughs> uh, and you also hang out on Ravelry together, too, yeah? Yep. Yep. And then once, once a month, they hang out in person. Those who are able to make it. Whoever yeah. can, can come along. Okay, so I've crashed it once before. It was at a pub last time. This time it's in the park. <laughs> or a bistro, sorry, not a pub, a bistro. This time we're going to the park. And are you ever looking for new members on the Ravelry group? Or yeah, is it if, they, if they live in Gippsland or would like to live in Gippsland. <laughs> <laughs> it helps to live, you've got to live in Gippsland. No, you don't I mean, have to. Wow. Well. But it'd be a bit hard to make it to the group. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't, I mean, you know, I don't live in Gippsland, but... <laughs> I'm just a ring in. The most important is my new two dollar basket. Really interesting. She was a young girl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And she just came over and wanted to talk about knitting, but yeah. she didn't know anything about knitting. <laughs> I don't think she knew anybody who did knitting. No. Did she want to learn? Uh, we weren't offering. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, there's plenty of YouTube channels to learn from. The number of people that you see where you ask them, you know, where did you learn to knit? And you know, I learned to knit off YouTube. It's much more common with crochet though. Yes, I learned to crochet from YouTube. My sister showed me initially and then I... And that's because you can, um, you can uh, fix your mistakes so quickly. Learning to read your knitting is probably one of the really important oh, things yeah. for a beginner. Yeah. To actually know when you've made a mistake. Yeah. And mm. rather than sort of knitting away and going, oh, that bit back there doesn't yeah, look why right. Is that or I've suddenly got mm. way more stitches than I should have. <laughs> My mother bought me wool and let me knit a jumper when I was 10 or 11. Yep. And um, that's a big thing in those days. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, <laughs> buying all that wool. Mm. But, um, you know. 10 or 11 year old can learn to knit but it seems to be harder for older people yeah so i learned to knit when i was 12 and i'm a kid of the 80s so it was the leg warmer era so i've got a couple of pairs of leg warmer socks one's in fisherman rib leg warmer oh well, they'd be nice knitted. and cozy yeah so they're still house socks yeah what they've a had great soles idea. put on them these days i thought this is great 16 ply that bendigo has i thought i'll get some of that and i'll make her a jacket Oh, fantastic. Then I had to find out what size to knit. And she said, what are you making? I said, it's a surprise. Mind mm -hmm. your business. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely colour. It's beautiful colour. It is a colour. great colour, isn't it? And the girls the that... Um, oh, let's have a look. On the phone. Let's have a look. 
We all know it's from Bendigo because yeah, you, you just look at it. And yeah. um, the girl on the phone was so helpful getting a colour for me. Yeah. She said, hang on, Margaret, I'll go into the back room. I think we've got someone special. I thought, oh, the back room. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and when it arrived, I'm very impressed with it. There's so, a... did you get that just recently? Yes, yes. Because I didn't think they had any 16 fire at the moment. Well, you've got to ring up and get the right girl. And it's just a simple knit, but it's got a cable band. Oh, nice. Go I've got a voucher for Bendigo. It'll be made, it. done in no time. Yeah, and it'll like keep it in person. That's really good. You have beautiful needles too, are they well bamboo? No, I've got these many years ago from the States. Um, oh, I don't think the guy makes them anymore. Yeah. No. They're gorgeous, aren't they? But they are lovely. Yeah. So, That's my story. <laughs> Thank you. Let's have a look at what Michelle's making. This is my beautiful mother-in-law. Oh, yes. <laughs> Creating a, a, a jumper to go to a Syrian child in a... Uh, in the uh, IDP camp in Syria. So pure wool. Yes, nice and warm. Has yep. to be nice and warm. Yep. And not flammable. Because yes. of the, their heating arrangements leave yeah. a great deal to be desired. And it's a, what a stripe. A woven, a, a woven uh, stripe every three rows or something. Four rows, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, the pattern's in your brain now, isn't it? Yeah, except I'm going to have to look up the next bit. Because <laughs> I'm almost up to a, to a, a decrease row. Yeah. It's shaping up over the shoulders. So it's... That's what it looks like. Beautiful. We're so, going to have to have a colour workshop, aren't we? We are, mm. yes. You know what you do? You just play. Because, yeah, seriously, yeah. yeah. No, but I do, I do have a, a workshop where you get to play with bits of wool in different colours and we go through all the colour theory and we go through a few other ways of, of, of selecting colours and the bottom line I have is you know the rules, now you can break them. Oh, right. Yes. I did a bit of research, did some workshops with some people who had a lot of knowledge about it, learned a bit of the theory. I said, okay, you know, you need to understand the science that's going on yeah. here. And um, yeah, learnt learnt how to use colours. I am um, Colour I tend workshop. to work from photos or mood boards if I yeah. want to put something odd together. And so I'll start with a photo or a mood board and then pull the colours out of that. Yes. And I do that a lot with the the colours that I dye when yeah. I'm putting together for the self striping. I might look at a bird or a something and pick the colours from that. Quite Nature. Fun. Yeah. Nature. Bit of nature. Bit of nature. I always nature. love the colours you put together in your walls. I'm just so impressed. Have you got any show and tell? Oh, <laughs> I've only got this, which is my mini skein set for gnomes. Seeing we're doing a year of gnomes. Ah. And I call this set Regal, I think, because... Um, and it's just colours I put together, which are nice and rich and um, very royal. Yeah, uh, it's, um, it's dual tones. I've done them as self-striping. Yeah, yeah, quite a bit partial to dual tones. So, oh, here's one I prepared earlier. Here's oh. one. Yeah, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> Hi, little very guy. Cute. We, so, yeah, we, we need to have a we need to have a gnome lineup. We have a gnome yes. parade. Yeah, so there's a, a knit along all year knit along called the Year of Gnomes, and you knit a gnome a month. But you can knit more if you want. Yeah. Um, and you put pictures up, and there's prizes and things. So, it, but it's rather cute seeing everybody's gnomes and the and the variations. So, um, yeah, you can go to a pattern, but you can do your own thing, like Joe did. This one's a hybrid that. of two. <laughs> that's gorgeous. That's, that's, well, Heather just says that's actually one of her daughters. My, yes, yes, one of my apprentices. Ah. <laughs> and this one's someone's hand dyed. So the, the body bit of this, I bought a little set of samples of hand dyed, hand spun yarn at an op shop. Oh. It cost me $2. Oh. And there's, 
yeah, it's dyed with some eucalyptus leaves. When it's wet, it smells so strong of eucalyptus. <laughs> and so I thought it needs to be something, and it's only a little bit, but it makes a really nice gnome. So this is all the different oh, oh, colours. Yes. All the different colours. Little people. I need Bri yeah. uh, Nick to bring Freya yeah. to come and meet them all. <laughs> she'll she'll love it. She'll go. Oh, so great! Somebody's got a gnome too. <laughs> so the lady who designed them has done a few mystery gnome knit alongs where yeah. you don't really know what you're going to end up Aww. with and I've done a couple of those. Yeah this one's a mystery gnome and this but, one's a mystery gnome and this one's a mystery gnome. Yeah. Yeah this one was December's last December's mystery yeah. gnome. And are you ready? Yes and gnome in a backpack. You're all doing your gnome. That's one that, that's well one. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's got the, a different bit. It's I got, like the tucks. Yeah. Well, so really they are fiddly though, I found. Yeah, yeah. But and I mean, you don't, you can't watch SBS <laughs> and do <laughs> <laughs> nothing with subtitles. The fiddliest one is the one that um that uh, Heather's knitting at the moment. The the cables, the cable the one, fine mm. cables. Yeah. But you you made one no of those hat. for for, for, uh, and for for the Chris for Kringle, Kringle a few yeah, years you've ago, got, didn't you've you? Got the, the, Joanne. Someone's but, got the Chris Kringle. You know, one, we'll I just work yeah. away at it. There's another one. Oh, yeah. This one. I think so I like the cables yeah. better. This is very fiddly. Yeah, well, I've well, got that very, pattern the based on how all struggles work. Because it's only, it's, it's like only a one stitch twist. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. yeah, it's just that you've got lots of four. It looks impressive. Four running at a couple of them. Mine's the yarn is stiff. So You're going to throw something at me if I say I'd probably prefer to crochet, you know? No, go for it. <laughs> yes, I'll throw a gnome at you. <laughs> I won't throw one of mine at you because mine are actually a little bit heavy. <laughs> You've got weighted bums? Yours got so so I did, I did pick the uh, unweighted one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So this is a test knit shawl that I did. So it's... um. Called Tumbling Vines Shawl. It's just come out on Rev. Um, I like that one. Gee, nice. It's 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 nice because it's got a little bit of interest and some simple, easy knitting. Um, that's done in my my sock, merino yak nylon yeah, sock nice. yarn. Feels good. <laughs> <laughs> Four ply. Four ply. Yeah. And yeah. So single skein. Single skein. Yep. Yeah. I had a little bit left over and I've been doing scrappy socks, looking at all the different ways I can put the scraps together, plus... What do you do for the joins? Do you do Russian joins? No, I don't do Russian joins. I actually do a, a method where I catch the new yarn and knit, knit it in behind for a couple of stitches, or for about eight stitches yeah. every second stitch. Then do the same with the old yarn for about eight stitches while I'm doing the new one. and. It's, I've, I've done a pair for Stephen, he's testing them, he's wearing them and chucking them in the washing machine and they haven't fallen apart yet. So, But this so, one was um, just putting together all the odds and ends of self-striping yarn that I had that sort of had pinks and teals and things. But I'm also just doing a generic sock pattern that will become my go-to pattern. Sock. Mittens for oh, we the Syrian the refugees. Um, oh, did I flip that off? Oh, those little ones are adorable. Yeah, little ones, so really quick, use up lots of scraps. Put this them is in and um, can cardigan I've been knitting for stonkish years. <laughs> <laughs> and I picked it up about a month ago and I thought, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to knit this till it's finished. And I did, and I'm so pleased I did. Then I had the decision finding some buttons. <laughs> Fortunately, I did have some, so, yep. So oh, that'll it. be lovely that's in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have some? You had some very nice ones. Yes. yes. Yeah. So I thought, oh, they're a bit special. I actually got them when we were in Alaska. So um, oh, I thought, oh, wonderful we're... memory. Yeah. I was going to say they're, they're bone or yeah. 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 I was going to say reindeer. Yeah. 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 Caribous or yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, so, gorgeous yeah. wool. Is that yeah. Bendigo wool? That's Bendigo um, tweed. Um, yeah. It's beautiful. It's yeah, you know, a very boring pattern because it's just garter stitch, but and uh, seed stitch. Yeah, yeah. But it's it looks good. Uh, warm yeah, and elegant. I yeah. think. I've already seen 
this, which I'm making for a, a, a little one in, in Syria, and it, the pattern is actually quite interesting because there was a, a series, well, a, a set of, of um, patterns that came out, were put together by well-known pattern designers, this was a few years ago, and was called Hearts or something or other, and, and there was uh, Hoi Locatelli, this is hers, and this is called Brave Hearts or something, and then there's Lion Heart and all, all sorts of stuff. Like that. There's tin one by Isolde Teague and Tin Can Knits and so forth. It was a, up for a limited time, and if you bought the book, they they um, contributed very substantially to uh, an appeal for um, buying mosquito nets for villages in in uh, Africa to you know, help to control malaria. So uh, I bought it at the time, and then I hadn't made it anything. But I think that you get a base pattern for the for the sleeves and and the body, and then every every designer has a different spin on the yoke. And um, I, I decided that this was a good way to use up this purple my sister had bought cheap at the op shop and there wasn't enough to make a complete jumper. So I thought, well, this is actually quite a good compromise. Yeah, looks great. I also have, I've mm. never made this before, but I've always planned to, baby house shoe. Mm. And in 10 ply, and how cute are they? Yeah. Uh, this is a bit of a continuing saga. I'm making myself an alias, which is a fabulous jumper, or cardigan, and I will have it for next winter, I think. But I keep on taking time off to knit baby stuff, so anyway. Are they bobbles inside a cable? Bobbles? No, it's no? just a cable that's done without a cable needle. You'd On one way you go, you, you knit, uh, slip one, uh, knit two and then pass the slip stitch over and then on the way back you do a yarn over in the middle. Oh, okay. Oh. So you do the bottom first and then knit up from it, that? Then you, yeah, you knit around, you pick the stitches up around the, yeah. the garter stitch base, a row of purl and then you go up. The, the, just do decreases fairly heavily to form the front and then you've got a band at the top. And So if you need a... If you need foot warmers for a, a child in fairly quick time, that's the pattern to go for. So I've got a continuation in the, the long saga of the Syrian socks for, with Heather's pattern. And wow. from, our, from our last get together, I was influenced by um, the using up the scraps idea. And wow. yeah, but if you don't look, I'll, I'll just leave it here. It hasn't come together perfectly. I don't know whether I'm it's having them. Perfect to me. No, <laughs> it's um. Well, I I thought of to use the tubular. What's that word? Uh, the helical. Helical. Yeah. Yes. And I tried to tried to do two stitches, uh, two rows of helical striping, and I didn't pay attention to the instructions very well and. Um, anyway, it looks a bit clumsy when you get up close, uh, but they're socks. the wall mice, <laughs> yeah, the, the, vo the wall mice colours yeah, shown off. Good. They were toe up, and it was a pattern oh, I that I um, haven't used before. I usually use just the same pattern. I was, it didn't go very well at the joins either. I think because I used, I changed the background colour at that same point where everything's joining. But anyway. They, they, <laughs> they look at, and, and other than that, uh, other things I've made have gone to recipients. So I'll show a thing that I'll show you in the end when it's finished. This is another faded jumper for myself. Oh, that's gorgeous. And I'm just knitting oh, along. That's sensational. <laughs> up the other way. <laughs> yeah. That's lovely. It oh, will lovely. be. Um, I have, I've, this is the second one, and the other one I wear quite a lot. It's just four ply but inside and, yeah, and using up some of my yeah and I've got a whole lot of single skeins of sock yarn so that's it for me really I've got a show and tell oh just finished oh lovely 
I would say wear that. <laughs> uh, the pattern's called Lot and Mist, and I've been looking at it for years and thinking one day I'll miss that. So I. So it one day came and you. One day it. came and I knitted it, and yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. So that's, that's beautiful. Bendigo cotton, and the colour was um, honeydew, oh, which is a really a pretty nice colour, colour, and they're not selling it anymore. Mm. I'm making a sock. Well, I'm knitting a sock. Oh, wow. mm. So this is years ago. I bought some Tafutsis yeah. sock yarn. That yarn would be good for scrappy yeah. socks. But I've, I've got to a point where I've got to divide, because it's top down, I've got to divide for the heel. And it's a 10 stitch pattern repeat with 70 stitches. And I can't decide. <laughs> so I'm sitting here looking at it. Do I divide it into 30 and 40? Or do I divide it into something a bit more even and not continue the pattern repeat? Anybody like to <laughs> weigh in on that one? You'd have to have a think about the... I'd go even um, and then think about what happens with the half repeats on each end. Yeah, well, with, with the first one, I did... The first pair, I, I mean. I did um, a ripple pattern, which was... I think that was an 18-stitch repeat. So after I divide, after I finished the, the heel, I decided that I didn't really want ripples on going along my feet, so I just mm. did plain knitting. So well, um, that's the other way you can do it. The, it's just continue the pattern along the top where it fits, and then yeah, just do plain on the bottom, edges. Yeah. edges from the heel down. And because that looks like it'd be a bit crunchy on underneath yeah. your, your the sole. Oh, I. I always done plain mm. under my foot yes. yes but do I want to have ripples on or no you can just this oh. on the top of my foot or will I just go plain mm. so I would go I'm plain here, I'm a bit delicate in my feet <laughs> or, or you, if, if you could simplify the pattern to even just like something from the center of it to just go down the center of the top well, yeah, that's, not even that's all the, the way other down thing. the other and the other thing I've seen is like someone's done a, a wedge so yeah. basically a triangular bit to where your shoe would sit. So this bit's patterned, but this bit's not. Mine too. She's yeah. doing surgery on it. I'm, 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 I'm trying to thread the hem needle with, with a tail that's far too short. Oh yes. But I didn't bring much show and tell, but I've got my one and only gnome. Who's confused. Does he have a name? This is Norbert. Oh yeah. And I have a problem with my gnomes. There's something goes wrong with their butts every time. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, he's got a reverse butt crack. So we've decided he must be a plumber. <laughs> so, that's my January gnome. Someone has to do the plumbing. And he does have poseable arms. Ah! Oh, he does too. He's got yeah. little wires in there. Little pipe cleaners, yeah. yeah. I had two For short ones. ends. Best thing ah. ever. Ah. Oh, look. Yeah. Fantastic. In case anyone needs to see them, they're called finishing needles. Oh yes. Oh, wow. I've not seen these they're, they're before. They're essentially an eye. <laughs> yeah, they're a giant <laughs> eye Flexible. with a couple of little points on them. Yeah. And they seem to yeah. be plastic. And my second nose, this, this is, is my February one, which is almost finished, Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I've got a bottom problem, but this time she's got a bubble butt. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, well, she's a girl, she's allowed to have one. <laughs> Anyways, that's she's, she's Natasha so and she's got two little arms. Again, they're poseable. So soft too. And um, yeah, this is. Um, this is your wool. They're yeah. all my wool. So Natasha's mostly the tough stocking, and the beards have mohair held double in there, so you probably can't see. But... Hmm. We're going to have to move down again, I think. There yeah, we go. The that's, that's her beard colours: the orange and the. Um, oh. So it's Rusty Holden Ute and Butterscotch, and, and they go so nicely you dyed together. Both yeah. of those. I Beautiful. do. I dye all of them. Yeah. Um, and mm. Norbert's got. A mixture of yarns, but again, they're all hand dyed by myself. Um, and that's all my show. Oh, one other show and tell for when I finish playing with gnomes is my brand new Spinifix yarn, which is an alpaca oh, linen silk. Ooh. And I can't believe that no one's bought the blue yet. So it's like, no, nah, it's off the website now. I'm taking it. <laughs> I'm going to. Um, beautiful. 
There we go. That's a hair in the skein. Let's have a look. I'm going to make a uh, urchin top. Yeah. By um, Truly Myrtle, Libby, Libby Johnson. 50% non superwash baby alpaca, 25% silk, 25%. That, that is beautiful. And, and, that, the, and the subtlety of the colours in there is phenomenal. And yet it is so hard to capture. Yeah. Um, in photography, and blues traditionally are really hard, and purples and reds. Yeah, um, the so gold and the really apricot sure. colour, you don't see that linen <coughs> so much because it's naturally a bit sort of off white colour, but it comes out more in the blue, in the, the purple, and the green that I've dyed so far. And I've got more to. you got more colours. And I'm, try and I'm trying to decide on oh, what colours because it's just such an exciting yarn to play with. Uh, but it is pure drape. There will be no memory. Um, if you have a look at the the cake there, you'll see that the centre hole hasn't collapsed in. Yeah. So there's just no elasticity in it. Um, so yeah, I'll make a summer top out of that. It'll be great for shawls and things as well. Oh, I love the name of the. And if and too. if anyone wants to vote for what colours I should dye, I'll we'll have to have a look at what you've got. I'm sort of thinking, oh, I really want to do Vegemite. <laughs> I don't know how well a brown yarn will go down Hang on. for summer tops. Vegemite in the jar or Vegemite spread? Because that's two different colours. <laughs> no, the Vegemite that I do. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a brown. Oh, no, no, no. That, that's, that's the mohair with, with yeah, Vegemite. It's brown oh. with an orangey. There you go. He's got red and yellows. He has a Vegemite beard. Yeah. He does. Yeah. He does. Um, he spilt Vegemite. Vegemite would be Julie's single most popular colour, I would think. Yeah. Ooh, it's up there. That, yeah. Night's Watch. Yep. Oh, that sounds good. Which is, a which really is the really blue, yeah. which has also got sort of purple and black and red and yellow. I seem to be going for this red and yellow theme, aren't I? Um, Nori yeah. would be another one. So dark, it seems to be all the deep saturated yeah, colours. That's what people say. They love yeah. the saturated colours. So, and the yeah. way you do your dyeing, it's not just a flat colour. No. It has depth in it and... That, that just that just puts it apart. There's a subtle um, like surprise in there. So people think Vegemite, they think either brownish, blackish, I think most people know what Vegemite itself looks like. And yet people say, so that was actually one of my first sock yarn club surprise colourways. And they sort of thought at first brown, but then as you look closer and as you work with it, there's that stitch change. And the way I dye, there's actually no pooling or not predictable pooling. If it happens, yeah. it's just sheer serendipity, <laughs> um, yeah. and that's just the way that I dye. And I like my colours like that. So it's like it looks like one colour, but as you get closer and as you work with it, each stitch sort of starts changing. Wow. Yeah, it's about those undertones. Okay. That mm. you put so in there. that the blue, the bass straight, that's blue and it's got purple and it's got teal in it. Yeah. Um, again, that's quite a, another popular colour. I never die enough of it. <laughs> Any of them. Okay, we'll start with the one that's on the needle, it's actually nearly off. So this is going to be a yarn bomb, um, and he's a, is for a bollard. Um, so this is the bottom, and this is the little cap bit that sits on top of the bollard, like that. And then this goes on top of it. <laughs> and uh, you might see what he's going to be now. Um, this is this is for my. Um, it's actually going quite near where my daughter's boyfriend lives and my daughter is the biggest Oscar the Grouch fan in existence. So the bits I've still got to do, he's got a little green fluffy hand that's going to hold his hat on and I've got to do his eyes and his big bushy wow. eyebrows. So it's nearly finished now. Which is fun. The, the long bit, every time I do one of these things I go, why did I decide that I wanted to knit that in the round in rib? <laughs> <laughs> no. The other bits haven't taken very long, they're sort of an evening each. Uh, and it's good because it makes you have to think about um, how, how you shape stuff. And this is my most mm. recent. Oh, wow. this, is gorgeous. this is gorgeous. So this is by Romy Hill, um, and the pattern's called Leaves in the Stream, and it's designed to let gradients have fun. So this is a, an all-over gradient, which is by Catherine of the Australian Wool Store. It's called Tutti Fruity, which is the starts to grey at that end goes through lemon pink and then into orange and the other one is a uh, crazy zalbal um, so and it, it was just such fun to and to let the colors just play with each other wow and it's just it's essentially garter stitch with little um 
pretty short easy road. to count. Short row, German short yeah. row leaves. Yeah. So, and it doesn't have a lot of stitches on the needle. It, the, the widest bit's about 110 stitches, so. Oh, high, high on my list of wanna do's. Yeah, oh, I, so. I needed it in four days. Yes. So <laughs> it is, it is really a really good. addictive <laughs> sort of, um, oh, I mean, I was on holidays. January off the needles, so. Um, I do a lot of test knitting for a, a, a um, designer in Canada called Yuki Knits. Heaps and heaps and heaps of stuff for her, usually hats. And this bobble stitch, she, uh, she said she invented it from crochet, actually. And she's made a whole heap of things with it. So this is, this is Olympics, you know, you, you've got to knit something while you're watching Olympics. So this one's a free hat called Hoarfrost. And it's knitted in some bamboo my mum gave me that I never really had enough to make anything of. And then we just went crazy stripy sunrise on the crown. Yeah, it's so. just gorgeous. And it's got, um, it's got a mohair held with it. But like all op shop bits and pieces. Cool? And this one is, this that one's really... almost, it, it is brioche, but it's probably the simplest brioche I ever did. Um, it's, it's only every second row is really brioche um, with the little loops over the top. And the rest of it is cable. So this one, again, it took me two days to knit. And normally a brioche hat will take me four or five because it's slow. I don't know, it's just not good enough. Nose scale. <laughs> nose, nose scale. Is yeah, it a reversible? Like a uh, no, That's this one's not really reversible. No. Most of the brioche ones are. Well, you yeah. can turn it inside out, but it's not. Yeah. It's interesting on the inside. It's interesting, but, but it's no. Not, yeah, I need to pat it. Oh, Oscar. you need to pat Oscar. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Is, it, is the grey a I think it's too the soft gray, for Oscar. Yeah. Oscar would the be wiry just, you know, and your basic oh, yeah. scratchy. That's lovely and soft. If, if, we, if you're doing yarn bombs, yeah. acryl, it needs to be acrylic yarn because yeah. um, it's much lighter and if it gets wet, it... Um, it doesn't sag as it much. It doesn't yeah. sag as much. Um, also, oh, wool really tends to fade really quickly, mm -hmm. but most of the stuff we do doesn't stay up long. It goes up, you know, a couple of months maximum. Yeah. Um, and, and these will these will get these these are going outside or well, there's a, about a million bollards out the front of um, Luna Park in St Kilda. Mm -hmm. But it's also fun because this makes me actually have to think about how to put stuff together. Oscar's head is essentially a hat crown. Yeah. Oh, this um, too. These are pie Now, I also did my own little show and tell, but I didn't film it because I'm working on a project for my bestie and she's probably watching this video and I'm not ready to show her yet. I think I want to finish it off and then I can show her and then I can show you. Uh, it's a pretty big crochet project, pretty exciting. So what I did while I was at the knitting group was I practiced my Norwegian knitting. Uh, I will do a video about Norwegian knitting eventually. I, I usually do English style knitting, so I'm a thrower, chucker, whatever you want to call it. But there's something I really like about Norwegian knitting and I really want to get going with that. So I've been practicing. So those gorgeous little gnomes are actually a part of a global knit along, uh, run through Ravelry or run by a, a group, a designer in Ravelry. So if you look up the Imagined Landscapes group, uh, you can get details for it there. They had a post not long ago about the year of gnomes knit along, so that's what you're actually looking for and I've, I've put some links as well. Now of course the gnomes had to have their own little photo shoot, which was kind of fun, so that the makers could put them on their Instagram, socials, websites and, and all of that. I got to hang out with the these lovely ladies for about four and a half hours and just listen to them while we all worked on various things. Look, if you can find a knitting group in your local area, I definitely recommend it. You can learn so much from other people. YouTube's great too, of course, I pretty much learned to crochet from YouTube, but when you're in a group and you can just bounce off each other and ask people's opinions, it's immediate. You get an answer straight away. <laughs> which is fabulous. Sometimes you don't know what you're looking for. You don't know what you don't know. So being in a group with people actually there, they're gonna come up with answers for things that you might might not know ever existed. Anyway, it was just an absolutely fabulous weekend and I cannot wait to do it again. And hopefully when I do, you can come along too. Mm. Okay, is it just me or has anyone else seen little gnome beards and noses? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've obviously I've got gnomes on. Yeah, no, 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 no,